My speakers are Vandersteen 1Cs. I've had those about five years. They're Vandersteen's uh, smallest floor standing speaker. Uh, they replaced a pair of um, 2Cs, which I had previously. They were, um, I found them to be a little too boomy and a little hard to control in my uh, room. And the Vandersteen 1Cs are a, a really great match to my room. Um, I love the way they sound. I, I don't think it's a coincidence that a lot of musicians, particularly jazz musicians, have Vandersteen speakers. They just seem to reproduce uh, instruments and the spaces they're recorded in in a really lovely way. Uh, the heart of my system is a Rogue Sphinx integrated amp. I have the uh, version 2. Um, that is a marvelous uh, hybrid amp um, with a tube uh, pre-amp stage and a uh, Class D uh, power. Um, wonderful sounding amp, really well built, uh, really great way of controlling the bass, makes uh, the bass and the Vander scenes very tight and accurate. Um, for sources, I use a Rega RP6 with a Rega Exact cartridge. Uh, I love that because I think it sounds great and it's super easy to set up and I don't particularly like fiddling with those sort of things endlessly. Uh, that goes into a Lounge LCR3 phono stage, um, which is a wonderful, lush sounding phono stage with an incredibly wide uh, sound stage, and it's very, very fun to listen to music through that. Uh, for digital, I use a Chord Cutest DAC. This is the newest addition to my system, and I really love the Chord DACs. Um, again, it, for me, it comes down to accurate reproduction of instruments. Uh, I feel like I can hear, you know, the wooden drumstick hitting a snare drum, and I can really hear the metal or wood shell of the snare drum resonating and just feel like I'm right inside of those instruments, and I love that. Uh, I'm also really into headphones, and I use um, my reference headphones are Odyssey LCD2s, which are from 2016. Um, again, they measure neutral, supposedly, uh, but, you know, whatever. They, they sound marvelous to me. They, they don't sound clinical or anything like that. They're uh, enveloping and lush and just, again, really fun to listen to. Those uh, usually with an Odyssey Deckard amplifier, which is a super powerful Class A amp. Um, headphones, these have a bit of a thinner sound to me, um, maybe slightly forward in the upper mids and lower treble, but they have a unbelievably wide sound stage and for me that makes them very fun to listen to and i power those with a little dot mark 3 which is a tube amp uh, that's designed for the hd 600 or hd 650. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to pick something that's on the um, contemporary jazz label. Also something that had uh, Shelly Mann on drums, because he's one of my favorite drummers and um, really fantastic drummer, uh, maybe a touch underrated. But there was a lot to pick from. He recorded a ton on, on uh, contemporary. Uh, this is a West Coast, a Los Angeles-based label. Um, Shelly was a Los Angeles-based drummer, although he grew up in Midtown, New York. Uh, he, after he got off the road with Stan Kenton in the early 50s, he, he sort of stayed in California and made his life out there. Uh um, so this is a record that he recorded in 61 uh, called Checkmate. And it's an interesting record. It's actually all music written by John Williams, the famous film composer. This is long before he was the famous film composer. But it's music that he wrote for a show. I think it was a very short-lived show, maybe like a cop show or a mystery show or something called Checkmate. And it's really great writing, and it's played so incredibly well by Shelley Mann's working band at the time, which included a, a great tenor player named Richie Kamuka, who plays beautifully on this. And this is also, I think, sort of the height 
from an audio perspective, I guess, is sort of the height of of contemporaries, you know, sound quality. Paul Winter, all of these records sound great. Yeah. They're all done in the same studio. Um, Roy Dunan is famous as the engineer, um, but he also had, I don't know if this guy was his assistant, but there's a guy named Hal or Holzer, H-O-L-Z-E-R, and he actually did the sound on this record. And I think, I don't know if he was an assistant or an understudy or what, but it sounds like a contemporary record. It sounds like a Roy Dunan record. Um, you know, I don't know if Roy was calling the shots and Howard just set everything up the way Roy would have done it or what, but this record just sounds so incredibly good. It's just beautifully, beautifully captures the band. Um, the studio where they recorded um, was actually a, a, a basically the storeroom of the contemporary records offices. It was it was um, you know basically the room where they had shelves of LPs stacked. And uh, I have a stereo copy and a mono copy. In this in this instance, I prefer the stereo copy. I, I like um, contemporary stereo. I think they did a really good stereo image at that time. ECM are one of my favorite record labels and uh, a lot of stuff with Jack DeJanet, a lot of great stuff with Young Christensen and Paul Motion and some really, really great band records. But I'm particularly uh, a fan of Keith Jarrett's solo records and, and there's about a million of them. Um, but my favorite by far is the, um, the box set of um, the Sun Bear Concerts, which is, um, he, he did a tour of Japan in the uh, 70s, and um, they basically recorded everything, every concert that he did, and they just put them all out in this giant box set. I really wanted a copy of this, it's quite hard to find, um, and I particularly wanted a German pressing because um, ECM fans or collectors will maybe know that German ECM pressings tend to sound a little better than the American pressings. They're a little fuller sounding as far as the, the, the you know, just the timbre. And um, I found this the first time I was uh, doing a German tour with Curtis Steigers about five years ago. I found this in Stuttgart and was very, very happy to find it. It's in great condition. And I love all of this. Well, the box set is just super cool. It's got a it's got a neat um, booklet in it um, with some really cool photography. This great black and white photography, um, particularly these sort of street scenes in Japan that I really love. Wow. Um, and I've listened to probably all of this by this point, but Kyoto uh, is my particular favorite concert, my favorite sort of, you know, segment of this record. And, and it's beautifully recorded. I forget the name of the engineer, but he's a famous Japanese engineer and he recorded the piano beautifully and you really hear the the room too um, it may not be the most accurate representation of a piano but I just love it, it it's something I really love to put on really late at night and just kind of relax to um, it's beautiful beautiful playing it's as Keith Jarrett's solo concerts always are completely improvised completely you know just off the cuff you just sit down with a clear head and just see what happens and there are these long improvised pieces that are just stunning, unbelievably beautiful playing and, and you know, spontaneous composition. The Cone concert is unique because he was playing a really crappy piano and he was very limited as to what he felt he could do on that piano. That piano had apparently a not really totally functioning lower two octaves or something like that. So he had to kind of stick around the mid range and he came up with all these great, very rhythmic ideas um, in the Cone concert. And the Cone concert is a, you know, his most famous record and you know, he sold like millions of copies of that. Um, and kind of allowed him to have this very selective career he's had where he's just sort of played whatever, you know, only exactly what he wants. 
but I actually like this stuff a little better. I, it, it's it's more varied. It's whatever, 10 records or something. It's 10 concerts. It's tons and tons of stuff. So it's more varied. He definitely gets into the um, sort of more gospel-y, more rhythmic sort of things that he likes to get into. Some of it's very avant-garde, very dissonant. Uh, some of it's just, you know, beautiful, almost like impressionistic sort of French music. Um, it's just It's just quite varied, I'd say.